So we're about to start the merge. This is written as a private, but just like we did before, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change it to a public so that we can run it outside of the deck class and test it out with several decks. So let's go ahead and make this work. I'm just following the comments, create a new deck D3. Deck D3 equals new deck. Big enough for all the cards, all the cards in deck one and deck two. All right, so how do we know how big those are? Oh, look at that. Somebody wrote a length method. That's fantastic. All right, let's go and uh, look at the Java doc right now because I want this to be beautiful. All right, here's how you make a Java doc slash star star enter. This is in NetBeans. Um, it'll make a Java doc for you. Um, this is the number of uh, I guess I'll just say it's the size of the array. The max number of cards in the deck. Uh, currently we're filling all the slots up with cards usually, but in case there's some nulls, this will actually be the max number of cards in the deck, meaning the size of the array. All right, so why is that neat? We're gonna go up to where I was about to call it. So now when I go, let me say this real quick d3 dot look at this length oh wow that's not magic that's a java doc right there so that's what i just typed in and now i'm gonna hit enter all right so well it's not at all where i wanted to nope that is where i wanted to put it but here's where it actually goes d1 dot length all right so create a new deck d3 that holds all the cards from D1 and D2. So here's D1 length. We also need to add that to D2 length. And now we have a deck that will hold both uh, the original two decks worth. And remember, I've made that constructor. So if you pass it a number and false, it won't fill it with cards. It would just create a blank array that we could then fill in later. Okay, so I's for the first deck, J's for the second deck. Index K traverses the result deck. All right, so this looks okay. It's gonna be a little tricky to keep track of the I's and the J's. Uh, the K's are already incremented for us. All right, so if D1 is empty, use the top card from D2. All right, so that's got the magic word if in it. If. D1. All right, how do I know D1's empty? That's a good question. You might think D1 length, but remember, this uh, length tells you how many card slots are in the array. So D1 length is always going to be the same value. Uh, so we don't want to use this because D. If I just say uh, equals zero, it's never going to equal zero because the length never actually changes. All right, so we're gonna need a different condition in here. So technically D1 and D2 will never be empty, but we're gonna use this. All right, these are such bad numbers. I'm gonna call this I1 and I2. And the reason I'm gonna do that, I1 is gonna be the index for deck one, I2 is the index for deck two, D2. And we better write that down. All right, so we're gonna use the index to determine if we're at the end of the uh, deck or not. So if I1 is, how do we do this? So if I1 is equal to D1.length, 
that means I1 has gone all the way to the end uh, of the D1 array. So we use the top card from D2. All right, we don't know what we're gonna use it for yet. D2. If D2 is empty, use top card from D1. All right, so we can pull the same thing right here. If I2, D2, D1, okay. Compare the top two cards, all right. So how do we look at the top two cards? Okay, so we'll go with D1 first, D1, we need to grab the card out of there. So this is index one. So that's the card in deck one at the correct index dot. We have the compare to. What in the world? Oh, we got a problem. All right, what I'm trying to do, this is a separate deck. Uh, it's not this deck, it's a different deck. So it's D1 dot, we have to get the cards, which returns a card array. Then we can index that array, then compare two, and we're gonna do the exact same thing with D2 I2. And we're going to say if that's less than zero, all right, so if it's less than zero, that means that the smaller was in deck one. Uh, what's the problem? I got an extra, no. I need to put that here. Yeah, so all this turns into a number, and if that number is less than zero, all right. So this means that D1 has a smaller card. Now it has a smaller card in that position. So this is the card we want to add to the original deck. Now how do we add it to the original deck? You notice this is static. So there isn't, because it's static, what you don't have is the cards. You don't have access to the cards field because of static. So we want to add it to the D3 deck. Now how we do that, D3 dot, we want to get cards, that's the array. This is at index K, which is the one that goes up by one every time right here. We're using K to index uh, D3. Uh, I'm tempted to call this I3, but I'm going to leave it as K. So this is the card at position K equals D1 get cards position I1. Once we do this, we have to do plus plus I1 because we don't want to look at that same card a second time. We've already merged it. So we're going to add uh, one to I1. Here we have the else statement going. If, so this will be the opposite, meaning that the small, the, the card we want is in D2. So basically we're gonna change these to D2 and I2. And you probably see why calling it I1 and I2 is much better than whatever they did, J, I, and J, oh my goodness. So we're still adding to the big uh, third deck. D2, I2, I2. Okay, I feel good about this. Now we gotta do something real similar here. We do it, if the deck was empty, we're gonna add the top card from D2. So here we add the top card from D1, just following along. This says D2 is empty. We checked if Yeah, I already talked about that condition. So we compared I2 to D2, and if we're at the end, this basically means we're at the end of the deck, so don't 
take cards out of the second deck because there's no more cards. So that's why we're pulling cards out of the first deck. Now up here, we're going to do the same thing, except instead of grabbing everything from the first deck, we're going to grab it all from D2I2. I think I should take care of it. All right. So we are ready. I already took care of the increment. And I've already added the card, so I kind of did these. These two lines are what I did every every set of these two right here. I've already done all that. Okay, so that's already taken care of. Return the new deck, that's easy. Return D3, okay. Wow, all right, a lot of code, a lot of code. Now we're gonna see if this thing actually works. Okay, so merge is a static. It takes two decks, hopefully merges them together into uh, another new deck. All right, so save this, no more errors, thank goodness. So we built some decks. We're gonna need two decks here. I'm gonna call them, you know what, let's, let's not get too creative here. All this code is beautiful. I'm gonna keep it, but just comments it out for now. All right, I don't wanna to get too creative. I'm gonna call it deck one and deck two. D1, D2. Uh, we need to merge. So let's print these first. D1 dot print. Two dot print. Now I need a, another deck. Deck, I'll call it D3. Now it's, temp it's tempting to go new deck, but remember the method we want to call builds a new deck for us. So how do we call this method a uh, merge? So you might think, ah, oh, D1 dot, there's no D1 dot merge. All right, the reason there's no merge on an objects because merge is declared as static, which means you don't call it with an object a deck object, you call it with a class deck. So I put the name of the class, um, and that's because the word static is here. It's not attached to an object, it's attached to the class itself. All right, now we'll do d3.print. Okay, we're gonna run this now, fingers crossed. See if I wrote the merge correct, one shot, no. Yes, amazing. All right, array index out of bounds. You can probably see a lot of these happening. Okay, fantastic. I think fixing this is a great topic for the next video, but did my best on the merge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some print statements in here to see what in the world is going on. It's usually good to start by clicking on the first error that you see that's in your code, so deck java 71 so there we go i think i know exactly what the problem is actually this one might be easy easy one to fix so let's think about this if deck one is empty we we do this but we don't want to do anything else in here let me make this code a little bit smaller basically if this happens right here this happens We've already added the co a card in. We don't want to do anything else. We want to just get back to the for loop. There's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to do this in a an ugly way. I could else everything, uh, but then I got to play the same game here. If this happens, I don't want to do anything else. So I'm going to go else, but now I got to add this to the bottom oh my gosh this is miserable right here uh, so I don't like this solution it's very difficult to read for me to read at least I'm gonna undo all this 
Pum, 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 pum. All right, so how can we fix this? I'm gonna use a break. Uh, what break does, it stops the execution and goes up a block, which in this case, uh, it goes up a block for looping. Um, so it'll go back to the for loop, hopefully. I don't need it down here because this is the end of the for loop and it's just gonna automatically loop back up. So hopefully those two breaks will fix it. Breaks are not generally considered good programming form. All right, oh yeah, I labeled everything, so all this makes perfect sense. Okay. So we'll label that original, D1 and D2, and this will be the merged. Boom, okay, let's see. And now I better get my smaller numbers back out. I don't think I really want a zero. It might mess things up, but hey, we'll find out. Oh, my code had no, that's great, no exceptions. So hey, it worked for the empty case. Look at that, it worked for the one case. Is that right? It put the smaller number first, the smaller card first. That makes me happy. Uh, then uh, we got some problems. All right, we got some nulls happening here two then the mm, that should be the nine all right so let's deal with these problems in the next video